All right, folks, so we're going to take a look at a multimeter in today's video. It came packaged like this. It was not in a box, most likely because this is a test and evaluation version that was sent to me from Banggood free of charge in exchange for this video review. Let's take a look and see what we have inside. And it is the Anang AN870 TRMS multimeter. Let's get this thing out. Um, one of the things that I immediately notice is that this is a larger or full size multimeter, which is awesome. For comparison purposes, this is the Anang AN8008, a very popular multimeter. I believe you get these for about $25, 20 to $25 on uh, various websites. This one, I will include a link below, which will show purchasing information and cost information. And then just one more comparison. This is a Unity 136B Plus, similarly sized. The screen is a little bit larger on the ending. The dial actuates very well and it has strong detent where it clicks into place. I can't set it in between two settings, which is nice. Buttons feel good. It has this rubberized or plastic uh, boot that goes around the body to protect it. On the back, you have a, a mount point where you, some people hang these things on the wall. And then you have a place to store your probes. It has a bail so you can have this thing stand up. Now with it standing up with one hand, it's difficult to actuate. So you'd have to use two. Um, pushing the buttons, you'd have to hold on to it with another hand. But that is fairly typical for multimeters, especially of this size. There is a screw here. Uh, we'll take a look at this in a little bit that you take out in order to put batteries in this multimeter. So we'll, we'll take a look at that as well. Let's see what else ships in the package. This looks to be a temperature probe or a thermocouple as they're called. Um, this NN 870 does have the ability to measure temperature. So we'll, we'll test that out. It comes with this user manual I have not read it yet because we don't like to read manuals. No, I'm just kidding. I have not read it yet, but uh, I'm sure that it contains useful information. Let's take a look at the probes. These are not silicon probes. They feel somewhat plasticky. They may be PVC. And then there are some markings on the side. They have these safety covers for the tips. They were not easy to get off. And then you have these protective things for the banana plugs on the probe ends. Like most multimeters, the probes plug into these different ports depending upon what you're going to do. Uh, one thing to notice is, is that this has a fuse for 20 amps max and it has a 20 amp input, which is relatively high for a multimeter. Uh, our common goes here for all settings. And then if you were uh, measuring uh, micro milliamps, you would use this. And then over here for your diode continuity temperature, um, your, your impedance or resistance, and uh, if you're measuring hertz or capacitance. So pretty nice. Let's get this baby opened up and put some batteries in it and uh, see what it looks like. This is nice. The screw actually goes into what appears to be a brass housing. I really like that because it will not wear out. A lot of times with multimeters, you'll see where the screws just go into plastic, which can cause problems. And then it looks like you put your AA batteries in this, I don't know, cart carrying case uh, holder. I don't know what you would call it. And then uh, you have connectivity over here.
it does have a rather bright display, large display, which is nice. I like that. And it has a backlight. Now, instead of being a backlight that's actually behind the LCD, it's a little LED here on the side that just shoots across. It'll work. So here is something that uh, I noticed. The back of the multimeter, it has the keepers for your probes. And I went to put the probe in and th these probes don't fit. They don't fit in the keeper. Now, I don't know if this is how they all are or is this how this test and evaluation version is. Uh, but what I can tell you is that the probes do not fit in the back of this case. So here's the website from Banggood, and I'll have a link along with a temporary coupon code below. Here you can see the multimeter right now is $36.99, and down here shipping to Nebraska would be $3.03, and I'm pretty sure that's consistent with most of the continental U.S. I just wanted to pull the site up. You can come here, you can take a look at some other pictures of the multimeter. Uh, down here, and we'll take a look at this, you can download the user manual. And uh, it does come with a paper manual, but in the event that you need an electronic copy or a replacement, you can get that here. The manual covers all the features and specs, so I'm not going to run through here. It says the package includes one multimeter, one test lead, and temperature sensor. One user manual, one storage bag, and a 16-piece test probe. Uh, I mentioned mine was a test and evaluation version. I did not get the 16-piece test probe. 16-piece uh, test probe. Um, I did get one set of leads and a temperature sensor or thermocupper, as it's called. And then here's some more detailed pictures. Uh, you can see we're going to do some DC voltage measurements, and you can see within certain ranges your resolution changes. Now, this is a 20,000 count uh, multimeter, which is pretty good. Most of the time you see multimeters in the 4,000 to 6,000. And that is basically how many numbers in a measurement they can take or measure without rolling over. Um, pretty interesting stuff. And in here, our accuracy is 0.05% uh, plus three digits. Uh, and we did the DC voltage measurement and we were within spec. Let me keep going down here and see if there's anything else that uh, we wanted to take a look at. This would be the probe that comes with the kit set that you buy. Uh, mine, as I mentioned, did not have that. And the reviews are 4.7 out of 5. So the user manual downloads as a PowerPoint presentation, which is different. Typically they're a PDF, but uh, I don't think it really matters. And if you have any problems, you don't need to have PowerPoint. There's all free alternatives that you can, uh, you can use to view these kind of files. Page one is just the user manual. Uh, page two over here is just introduction that talks a little bit about uh, the meter, um, talks a little bit about some of the symbols, hazardous voltage, double insulated, risk of danger, check user manual. And then it goes through the specification similar to what we saw on the shopping site. Um, Nothing, nothing else additional here. Uh, and once we go over here, there is an instruction set, uh, section D. And it goes through all the different components and buttons and switches and knobs on the multimeter. Uh, and it does a pretty good job of explaining each one and how they work. There is also a second sheet in here. Uh, it looks like it's pages five, six, seven, and eight. And uh, What's handy here is it goes through the different things and it tells you how to do things like measure a diode or measure capacitance. Here it talks about uh, measuring current. I just wanted to point out one point. It says do not input voltage exceeds 36 DC or 25 volts AC when you are measuring current. And that's probably something to pay attention to. On the meter, there are some ratings uh, where it says it's 1,000 volt CAT 3 and 600 volt CAT 2. Um, I take those CAT ratings uh, with a significant grain of salt when it comes to these cheaper budget meters. Um, I wouldn't use them on any high energy circuits. Um, I would use a, a more accredited brand. But for desktop type work or beginner electronics, ham radio stuff, these things, these things are fine. I um, mean, it just goes through measuring some other stuff and some general maintenance. So all in all, this is a pretty decent uh, user manual from my perspective. Okay, we are going to do a quick test for frequency. So this 
Nang, the NN8008, is capable of generating a square wave. You can see that down here. And we are going to read that square wave on the AN870, which cannot generate a square wave, but it can measure one. So let's go ahead and turn this on to our Hertz. Um, it also has a percent here for duty cycle, and we're going to take a look at that too. And then let me go over here, and we should be generating, you can see 50 Hertz uh, square wave, and then over here you can see 50.01, so it's within spec. Now, I believe I can hit this select button. Here we go to 100, 200, 300, 400. And uh, this one seems to be tracking along just fine. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this to duty cycle. So you can see it is a 50% duty cycle. And that's how square waves generally work, on or off, uh, for each increment, which would be 50% of the time. Let's go ahead and switch back to Hertz and keep going. I don't remember exactly how high this can go. All right, there we are at a kilohertz. Now we are two kilohertz. Three. Let's see. It's a couple digits shy. Four. And there we go with a reset. Okay, you on to the next test. Let's just demonstrate a quick continuity test. So I set my dial to resistance, diode, continuity, and capacitance. And what I'll do is I'll select this until I get the symbol for continuity. And so we measure continuity, which is an electrical connection between two points. It is a very common thing for folks to do with multimeters. So let's just take a quick look. I have a piece of coax here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that in on the center connector on this side, and then I'm going to touch the pin. And what that would do is tell me that my center connector here is fine. I can also check the shield connection. And we have continuity there as well. So here we have both meters wired up in parallel with my Unity UTP-1306 power supply. And what we're doing is we're just cycling through the voltage and we are comparing the two meters to see that if and when we test voltage, if the metrics are the same, and then how well it responds to changes in voltage. And you can see both meters are doing quite well here. I'm just going to go ahead and cycle through a little bit slower. And then this is going to conclude our voltage measurement. Okay, and then similar to the voltage test, we have both meters connected. Uh, this time they are connected in series. And then we are using the Unity 138B+, I believe is the meter just to compare the readings and see how they respond to changes in amperage or current. You can see that both meters are quite responsive and the results are similar. And that's gonna conclude the current measurement. Okay, let's do a component measurement here. We've got a couple different com components hooked up to this breadboard. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and measure them. Let me go ahead and turn this on. Uh, the first thing that comes up is we are at measuring resistance. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's start. We're going to start with this 1000 ohm resistor. And it's having a little bit of this trouble deciding right where it wants to stay. But uh, we're going to go ahead and call that close enough. I'm going to come over here. I believe this is 2,400. And this is bouncing all over the place. And that can be a problem with some auto-ranging multimeters is that they take a while to settle on the, uh, the measurement that it wants. It switches between ranges. Um, you can see this one's a little bit all over the place with this particular resistor, but it looks like we're settling on something. Um, that did take a while. Um, personally, I would prefer if it didn't take that long. 
And then I believe this is a 220 ohm resistor. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to test this one. And there we go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit select because I'm going to change this over to measuring diodes. And uh, here we have a series of diodes from white through green. And so you can see that it's lighting it up and it's measuring the forward voltage on that diode. And it's working all the way across. <clears throat> the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the ability to measure a capacitor. Let me go ahead and hit select. And down here you see nanofarads. And that is our clue that it is ready. And there we go. Okay, here we have our thermocouple hooked up to the AN870. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this for a temperature setting. Here you can see it's shared with millivolts. So what I need to do is I need to go select. And now it's set for a Celsius reading, where I can change that to a Fahrenheit. Right now it's reading 68 degrees Fahrenheit in my ham shack. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it in this little bowl of ice water that we have here. And then we should see a temperature change. And you can see that it is quickly dropping. Not sure how low it should go or what to expect here. Let's go ahead and change this back to Celsius. So we're looking at around 4 degrees Celsius. I'm just going to hold that in my hand. And then you can see the temperature go back up. Okay, so here's the part that everybody wants to see. Let's go ahead and take a look at the insides of this multimeter. Okay, a couple things to note. Here is the central processor for this multimeter, and what you typically see in these are some sort of insulating blob that is placed over there. Uh, we have a transistor here, and then we have a crystal here for timing. This would be your piezo buzzer for uh, when we do continuity tests and hear that. One of the things I'm going to mention is, is that uh, you see two fuses here, so you can replace those if necessary. Um, these appear to be ceramic fuses. I don't know if they're sand filled or not. The shunt that you use for measuring current is actually quite small on this meter. So I'm a little bit surprised by that. Um, typically you see a bigger shunt and then um, here this trace looks like it's been reinforced with some solder. Another thing I was going to mention is that I don't see any input protection, which is typically something that you would see here with some mobs or something like that. Um, which reinforces something that I said earlier about, about this rating, the 1,000-volt CAT, 600-volt. Um, I don't trust that rating, and it's not a slight or a dig on NANG or any of the cheaper multimeters. I just wouldn't use a meter like this on high-energy circuits or potentially life-threatening situations. I, I would use something that is uh, you, where you can trace the certification to its ratings. Um, that is not something I can do here. This is a pretty basic multimeter. Uh, looks like the PCB is designed for this case. It fits in there perfectly. Um, not much else to say here. Uh, I'm not going to take it down any further. Um, you can if you want, if you have one, but uh, that's not something that I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. All right, folks, and that's going to wind up this video. I want to say thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. And a big thank you to Banggood for sending me this meter for my consideration.